All right, so for those who have seen some of my previous videos, I did a really fun uh, thermal take core P5 build um, utilizing liquid cooling. And here's just a quick little uh, shot of me filling those loops with the Mayhem's Pastel Blue Coolant that I really like. But with that build, I was running a GTX 1080 uh, for the graphics card. I recently got a hold of a EVGA GTX 1080 Ti Hybrid Edition. And so going to go ahead and show how uh, to dismantle the um, EVGA cooler and install a EK water block. In addition to that, I'll be draining my loop as that's part of the process, so uh, stay tuned and you'll see it from start to finish. And here's the GPU. Uh, it is the EVGA uh, Superclock 2 Hybrid uh, 1080 Ti. Uh, basically, this one has a built-in closed uh, cooling loop uh, with a 120 millimeter uh, fan on a radiator. Um, obviously, we're not going to actually use that radiator, but uh, I picked that up for a good price, and so I'm going to show how to take that off and then install the EK water block I have sitting right next to it. So let's get started and here we're running a quick test just to see what the temperature are like uh, while mining zcash zcash is pretty uh, gpu core intensive so right now after about 15 minutes it's running at 55 c which is pretty decent with that single rad over there uh, that rad does get pretty hot to the touch um, but it seems to be doing its job and right now that particular card is mining at about 740 sol per second all right, and so here's the actual um, hybrid cooler. And what it looks like, just kind of at first glance, looks like all the uh, all the RAM, all the VRAM, and some of the diodes are, are uh, covered with this this heat this uh, heat sink right here, which is directly behind the fan. So that's actively cooling uh, that heat sink, and then the actual uh, you know the actual water block is sitting directly on top of the of the core on the, on the GPU itself. So. Uh, pretty basic design. It, it's quiet, which is nice, um, and it does maintain some decent temperatures. But again, we're going to go with uh, an EK block for the custom loop I have on my on my larger system. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this and get some pictures of it uh, naked, and go from there. So the first thing to do is just take off the back plate, and then I can get to these uh, larger screws that are holding the water block against the GPU, and the whole shroud should pop off as well. So. And you will note that there there is a, um, a sticker covering one of the screws uh, here on the back plate. So in order to get to that screw, I'm going to have to remove the sticker. Now, with EVGA, that will not void your warranty. The only thing that will void the warranty on these cards is if you remove this sticker with the serial number, or if you physically damage or modify the card, um, you know, different from what it, it came to you. Um, in order to RMA or what, what have you. So I have verified that, that removing this sticker will not avoid the warranty, so we're good to go for put on, putting on another water block. go. So we got the top of the shroud off. We're going to go ahead and pull off this little six pin fan header, or LED header. And take a better, get a better look here at the innards of the device. And so it actually looks like the, uh, so the, yeah, the, all the, the RAM that surrounds the, uh, the GPU core here is actually attached to this main water block to these copper plates. So it does, so it's all the, uh, all the capacitors and VRMs are underneath this, as was actually cooled with this heat sink. So, all right, let me go ahead and unplug a few things here. There is the fan power, which also powers the pump. All right, and so the last thing to do is we're going to go back under here, uh, take off these four screws here, which allow you to basically pop off. Uh, larger water block. And one thing I probably should have mentioned, uh, when you're taking these screws out, make sure you keep track, because there are two different sets of screws here, so make sure you kind of keep track of you know, where they're coming out. Obviously, if you watch my video, you'll see where they came from, so 
it's not a big deal, but just uh, just be aware that they are different screws. So now we're gonna flip this guy back over. Now I'm not sure if I'll actually be able to utilize this uh, back plate again with the EK block. Um, I've heard conflicting stories on that, so we are going to see what happens. Um, but I'm hoping I can reuse it, otherwise I have to spend another 30 bucks for an EK back plate, if I choose to even use one, not really necessary. But alright, so those screws are off, and now this is literally just going to pop right off. And there it goes. And so you can see there we have the water block itself and all the uh, thermal thermal paste that's on there. And so now what we're going to do is uh, just kind of carefully uh, pull all the little plates off of these thermal pads that are stuck to the RAM. And then this this one should pop off a little bit easier here. Yeah, that one comes off pretty easy. So again, we got the throw pads there, and we're gonna to want to save those. And just be careful around these that you're not, you know, digging into these diodes or what have you. Um, just, you know, take care when popping this off. But honestly, it should come off fairly easily. It's just basically a small amount of adhesion with these pads, is all it is. And there it goes. Okay. And so that is our naked 1080 Ti, super clocked, super clocked 2. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and clean off uh, the GPU core here and then line up the EK block and just verify that uh, nothing like these extra headers are going to con uh, conflict with the block. All right, so we went ahead and took off all the thermal compound, and you can see it's uh, nice and shiny, uh, the GPU itself, and you can see the model number there on it. So now it's ready to try out the uh, water block and just see how things line up. So I'm going to go ahead and move this other way and get the water block on the table. So within the packaging of the UK block, uh, you have this is this is the nickel uh, plexi block. So basically, it's a nickel nickel uh, water block and then a, just a plexiglass you know backing here. Uh, it's got the design where you can uh, go from either direction uh, with your your fittings, so that's that's pretty nice there. And just overall, really, really good looking block. You have some more thermal pads, and then the various uh, screws and what have you to reattach the block back to the GPU. Um, now, again, it has all these other screws in it, but I'm I believe that the threading is the same on the ones we took out, so I might be able to reuse those or, or use the, and either way, I think we can do it and again still use that back plate, so we'll see what happens there. So uh, the next thing we want to do is just check uh, for fit and placement of the water block. Uh, reason being, the on the forums I've been reading that people have said that this particular uh, water block doesn't fit perfectly on these EVGA cards because of uh, the fan and art, uh, LED headers. And so it looks at first glance like it actually will because there's some cutouts that accommodate for um, at least at least that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and check and see if there's possibly something that we need to do to modify. Um, now people in the farms have been modifying their cards. They've been like tearing out the headers or you know unsoldering and pulling the pins. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna screw with the warranty on an $800 graphics card. If I have to modify anything, I will modify the acrylic on the back of this water block. I'll just use my Dremel tool and, and bore out, you know, some additional space if needed, if needs be. So let's just test this really quick and see what uh, what we have. So starting from this side here. All right. So standoff. Um, you know, touch the PCB. So no issues there. Over here is interesting. Um, that header is actually touching the top of the acrylic right there. So definitely might be of concern, but actually, nope, I look, I don't know if you can see that inside there, but basically there is a standoff right next to it, kind of hidden that is touching the PCB. So actually, even though this header is touching the top of the acrylic, it's just enough clearance to not be an issue. Rotating the block around. Nice and flush there, no problems. 
And here's the last one. And again, looks the exact same. So basically, even though the header almost touches the top of the acrylic block, the, the standoffs touch the PCB. Um, so we're not gonna have any issues installing this card. Um, on top of that, you know, we have the four retention screws that actually suck that water block onto the, the GPU core. And they're also gonna ensure that there's, it's nice and flush. So between that and the thermal pads on the RAM and the MOSFETs and whatnot, I don't see this being an issue. There's really no need to modify anything in this card, which is nice because I wasn't looking forward to having to do that, but now it's not an issue. And um, I think what probably brought it up initially is if you look at this here, so if you look at this here, that you know the, the standard like Founders Edition NVIDIA uh, 1080 Ti um, had an LED header here, but it's, it's only a two pin header and it's turned um, basically parallel with the power pin connectors. Now the EVGA card instead has a six pin connector and it's offset to the right a little bit and turned uh, perpendicular to the power pins. So that was probably what was causing the concern. And if you look at the water block, uh, sure enough, it's, it's been bored out to accommodate for a, a, par you know, a parallel um, header right there. But being that this is shorter, it's not a very long, you know, tall header, it actually doesn't conflict. It, it just touches the block, but it doesn't make it so it can't sink down nice and snug. So not going to be an issue there. So next, I'm just going to really quickly uh, probably do this in kind of like a fast, fast motion video. Now that we have everything ready to go and we verified fit and, uh, fit and function there, I'm going to go ahead and put the thermal compound on the GPU core and then add my thermal pads to the, the RAM and the uh, inductors and MOSFETs. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so with that, we have the thermal compound and all of our thermal pads uh, where they need to be located. And so now we can plop on the water block and start tighten, tightening things down. And one thing to note, so the uh, EK instructions just basically say to put the pads on the, on the uh, RAM chips, uh, the, the inductors and the MOSFETs. They don't mention um, these smaller components here or this, these ones right here but the EVGA um, cooler actually does have thermal pads um, along these right here and along these these components here so I'm actually gonna add I already added this one here I'm gonna add some here as well figure it can't hurt and if they were cooling it that way I'm just gonna kinda keep with that um, train of thought alright so Ready to go here. I'm going to drop this directly on top, lining the screw holes up. Alright. So, feels pretty good there. Let's go ahead and flip it over. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the GPU retention screws, uh, tighten those down in a, you know, a star fashion, and then we'll work our way out to the rest of the, uh, the graphics card. There we go. Okay, and I haven't, I mean, these are snug, but they're definitely not tight. Because I just want to basically get them on there, and then again, check my fit on everything. And again, everything looks really good. And it's Again, looking like using these, using the stock EVGA backplate is not going to be a problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with that. I am going to sink these down now, tighter. Okay. 
Now we'll move on to the other screws here. Okay, so these four do not have uh, any standouts behind them. This this one here does not, and then this doesn't. But I know that uh, I know that EK provides a little uh, a screw with a nut or a, a, a bolt with a nut to sink this down here. So that one's not a problem. Everywhere else appears to have a standoff to tie directly into. All right, so looks like we do have to use the EK screws. I was, I was hoping the threads would be the same. Not the case. So the first one we're going to install is this uh, M6 screw that goes right here next to the I/O shield for the or the um, the ports. Right. And put that nut right on it. All right. That one's sunk in good. And then basically we have 10 of these longer. Well, no, we have one more of the 6 millimeter. Looks like we have 11. No, 12. 13. <laughs> So these are six, six millimeter long, which I'm hoping, even sitting on top, will be long enough to thread, and it should be. So let's give it a whirl. Hmm. All right, so they're all screwed in, and it looks like everything's nice and flush. All right, so with that all done, uh, now we are going to go ahead and move to uh, draining the loop on my existing liquid cool PC, and then um, attaching this guy and filling the loop back up. So. Stay tuned for that part of the process. I'll go ahead and kind of speed through it to make it not be a, a drawn out thing, but we'll go from there. All right, so there's the existing setup um, with the 1080, uh, GTX 1080 right now with the water block. So we're gonna go ahead and drain the system. Um, I'll kind of show the process that I utilized to, uh, that, that I set up for my drain port. And then once it's drained, uh, we'll install the new GPU um, hopefully there's minimal modification with the hardline tubing and go from there. So let's see how that works. I've actually never drained the system before. It's been really efficient. Um, haven't had to, so I'm curious to see how my, my thought process works for the actual draining if I set it up correctly. So we'll see. All right, so everything's been powered off now. Um, and again, you can kind of see uh, placement wise I am going to modify some tubing because if you look at it here um, it, it's offset this way about half an inch on both these ports so I'll tweak that a little bit but what we're going to do first thing um, I basically built in I, I got this radiator specifically because it had a lot of ports on it including one to the bottom that I could actually uh, tie into one of these rotary, rotary uh, 90 degree fittings that goes to a ball valve which I have attached to go to a uh, quick disconnect. So let me zoom in so you can kind of see that a little, little bit better. So again, this typically just kind of sits nested underneath there. It's pretty much out of the way. But what I can do is I can pivot it out this way. Um, I have a quick disconnect. So this is the, uh, the female end, this is the male end that's attached to the ball valve. So basically all I have to do is pop on the, dis the quick disconnect, uh, turn the ball valve and then just put the end of this you know in a bucket or a big jar or whatever to, to catch the uh, the liquid so let's go ahead and do that and
drain the system enough to where I can change out the GPU. I'm not going to worry about flushing the entire thing right now. Just enough to where I can change the GPU out. Okay, we are connected. So I'm going to turn the ball valve and then I'm going to bleed the system. I'll probably do it here. If not here, I can also loosen the uh, fill port on top of the res to, you know, so there's not a vacuum, so it just exits all the fluid here. All right, so with the majority drained, I went ahead and uh, pulled out the, uh, you know, the display connectors, uh, unplugged the power, and took out the thumb screws that on the on the card on the mounting bracket there. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, some paper towel down because it probably will leak a little bit, and undo the hard line fittings. Alright, so as you can see here, we've got to remove the uh, existing GPU, and the other one's ready to go. Um, again, the main thing here is I got to see if this tubing actually lines up, but the install is pretty much the same as anything else, so it should be pretty pretty quick here. So you see the little blue line on there? Um, that's where we're going to make the cut. And basically, to do this, I don't even need to take it off. I'm going to use a pipe cutter here. The nice thing about this is there's no burrs on it, which is always a good thing. And, yep, that'll work. So we'll go ahead and force that O-ring back on. And re-tighten this down. So that is on, and we have a nice, what looks like a nice uh, perpendicular, or parallel uh, to the reservoir tubing. All right, so with everything hooked back up, um, I'm actually going to leave the uh, drain hose attached because I'm going to flush it with some distilled water before I put anything new inside of it, um, in addition to just making sure everything turns on correctly. So. Let's go ahead and give that a shot and see uh, what we can do. All right, so the graphics drivers have been installed. Um, we've been running for about 20 minutes now, no leaks. Um, it's actually bled out a lot of the, the, the noise from the bubbles at this point. Um, but so all there's left to do is to you know drain the system again, put it in the coolant I want to utilize for long term, 
But before I do that, I want to go ahead and uh, benchmark the GPU um, using the mining software again and see what kind of temperatures we get compared to the hydro uh, water block that was installed before, or the hybrid water block that EBGA leverages. Um, oh, also going to move. This is the uh, CAM software right here, little dashboard that I run on the secondary display that goes down here. So let me go ahead and zoom in and let you see what that looks like installed. And it's set up as my fourth monitor directly below this one. So I'll just drag it down. Pop it there. Now I have my, my dashboard, all my temps. And so at idle, the GTX 1080 Ti uh, with this particular water block is at 31 degrees. So uh, pretty decent there at all temperatures. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on some mining software and see you know, what kind of temperatures we get at that point. Okay, so I just started the uh, Zcash miner and it jumps to 42 degrees. You can see the GPU loads 100%. And again, we'll, we'll let this guy do its thing for about 10 minutes and come back and see what temperature we're at. All right, so we've been running for about 10 minutes now. And uh, as you can see from open hardware monitor, uh, at stock speed, it's mining at about 725 sol per second, and the highest temperature it's spiked yet on the GPU is 47 degrees Celsius, compared to 55 degrees on the cooler that came with the hybrid, um, you know, at stock configuration. So, again, this EK water block is performing extremely well. Um, obviously, I have a much larger radiator than what that stock one does, but uh, just glad to see the, the temperature delta there. Um, and, and what performance you can get with one of these custom water blocks. All right, so here we have the uh, system upgrade completed and the Mayhem Blue Pastel Concentrate back in the loop. Um, as always, looks great. Uh, temperatures with the EK water block are excellent and at load they're roughly 10, 10 degrees less than what the hybrid you know, closed loop solution from EBGA can provide. Um, so that's, you know, that's obviously great to see. Um, I'll run some more benchmarks and you know try overclocking the card a little bit later for a different video. But at this point, thanks for watching and uh, hit me up in the comments with any questions.